while the Renaissance did see a growth in literature it was the growth in art that stood out most. In the Middle Ages art was very basic. It didn't look realistic at all. In the Renaissance they began to understand the concept of perspective and used it to improve their art. With perspective, thing in the back of a painting are drawn smaller and those in the front are larger. It's just like when you see an airplane in the sky and it looks tiny. It's not like that airplane is for ants or something. It is just far away, so it looks small. The artists also stopped using such bright colors. They used soft colors that were more lifelike and added shadows to make things appear three-dimensional. I could go on explaining this, but I think Mario can show it best. One of the most famous artists of the Renaissance was Michelangelo. Michelangelo started his art early. His first major sculpture was done at age 15. That's pretty amazing. He wasn't very interested in painting, he really only wanted to sculpt. He believed sculpting, bringing rock to life, was true art. Even though he didn't like painting he was incredibly good at it. I'm so jealous. He was a superstar in his field. When people thought of art they thought of him. He was paid way more than most artists as well, just like a sports star would be. Even though he preferred sculpting Michelangelo is most known for a painting. Well, a bunch of paintings I guess. This is the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Seriously, the ceiling. This is a huge ceiling many feet in the air and curved. It is incredibly detailed and took over four years to finish. Michelangelo at first wasn't interested in the job, but the Pope at the time, Pope Julius, really didn't give him a choice. Michelangelo wanted all of his work to be perfect, and at one point after months of work he threw white paint over what had been done and started over from the very beginning. This would be an incredible work, even if it was done normally on a flat surface, but painting it on a ceiling was incredibly difficult, and makes it all the better. Totally amazing. I still don't know what to paint in this blank space, and His Eminence will be here any minute. It's His Eminence! 
His eminence. Look, it's his eminence. His eminence is coming. Gad suits his eminence. Don't worry, Mike. You go say howdy. We'll finish up. Your eminence. I'm so glad you could come. I've worked so hard to please you. I hope you like my ceiling. Ah! I'm ruined! <laughs> I like it. Hey, Mikey, he likes it. Painting is like show business. You have to know your audience. Finally, we will look at technology. In this section we'll be discussing the coolest guy ever, Leonardo da Vinci. I know most people think of him as an artist, but he was truly interested in technology. So much so, that he has earned the nickname history's first modern man, because he thought so far ahead of his time. All right. I heard about this game. I think you're going to like it. This game is called Leonardo. Or, Leonardo. It is really simple to play. I'll show you a picture, video or description of something. You simply guess whether it is something that Da Vinci planned or not. Remember, Da Vinci lived over 500 years ago. We'll start with an easy one. Come on. Don't be shy, just yell it out. The Mona Lisa. Yes, of course, this is a Leonardo. <laughs> Vinci leaves the service of Borgia and returns to Florence and the art of painting, perhaps to explore the gentler side of human nature. There he begins the one work for which he will always be remembered. No, no, non ridete. Sorridete. È divertente, ma non isterico. Pensate cose dolci. Pensate al vostro amante. Giusto. It is called the Mona Lisa. No one knows who she is, or if she even existed at all. As he paints, Da Vinci keeps her amused with music and entertainment. Leonardo says in his writings that faces are most beautiful at dusk. He captures this effect by using transparent films of paint, a technique which is later called sfumato, which means kind of literally smoking, kind of a smoky effect. You can see it in these almost invisible transitions from light to shade, which are so enigmatic and so incredible that anybody could paint that with brushes. It's really a great display of virtuosity. People often talk about the Mona Lisa smile as being mysterious. If it is mysterious, it's because Leonardo da Vinci has uh, shaded the corners of her mouth and eyes, which are some of the most expressive feature of the human face. It's to suggest that the Mona Lisa is a painting of a mystery. That there's something very, very secret going on with the Mona Lisa. And this is, we get the elaboration of this myth of secrecy about the Mona Lisa smile. Or who is the Mona Lisa? You know, is she Leonardo's lover? Is she Leonardo himself? History does not reveal her true identity. Da Vinci's biographer Vasari identifies her as Mona Lisa Giaconda, the wife of a merchant. But Vasari never saw the painting, and Da Vinci himself never left any clue. He carried it around with him for years, and he kept working on it, 
never quite done.